Okay, this is the third lecture video for chapter three. This is titled Cell Metabolism and Energy. So again, what is metabolism? This is all of the chemical reactions that take place in a cell to allow a cell and an organism to survive. Metabolism is organized into metabolic pathways that contain a series of steps and they are driven by enzymes. And enzymes are there to speed up the chemical reactions that are going to happen and that, so that they can happen when the cell or the organism needs them to happen. These kinds of metabolic reactions can be divided into either catabolic or anabolic reactions. We'll talk first about anabolic reaction. So in anabolism or an anabolic reaction, bonds are formed and you're taking smaller subunits and creating larger polymers from it. This requires an energy input. The energy is being put into the formation of the bonds. So this is potential energy being contained in the bonds that are created. Examples in humans would be as our bones grow, that's an anabolic reaction, and building muscles, that's also an anabolic reaction. Catabolism or catabolic reactions. This is when bonds are broken. As bonds are broken, polymers are turning into monomers. So large molecules are being broken down into smaller molecules. This is a process that releases energy and an example is digestion and cell respiration. So as the energy is released from catabolism, that energy that's freed from the bonds that are broken can be used for anabolic reactions to build things back up. So this is a cyclic process. So what is this ATP energy that we speak of? ATP, if you remember, is the energy currency of the cell, adenosine triphosphate. Why does the cell need this energy currency? So think of it as, um, think of like a gumball machine and you can only put pennies, or these old timey gumball machines, you can only put pennies into them, sometimes nickels. That's the only currency they, they use. The cell runs off of ATP energy. So even though we eat foods, we eat carbohydrates, we eat proteins, our body can't use those. It has to use the ATP form of energy. And what does the cell need this ATP for? It needs it to do things like synthesize polymers, so um, building proteins, active transport, bringing substances into the cell, or helping substances, waste products leave the cell, or proteins leave the cell. Muscle contractions, you need ATP for that. And for the cell to divide, it needs this ATP energy. So those are just four reasons that the cell would need to have a supply of ATP energy. This is a diagram of the ATP cycle. ATP is made through the process of cell respiration in the cell, and it doesn't exist very long. It's, it's a highly reactive molecule. That third phosphate will break off and release energy and then it becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate. That is the low energy form of the molecule. It can quickly then be recycled back to the high energy form, which is ATP. ATP generally lasts three to five seconds in a cell before um, it is used by the cell. So it's very, very fast energy. This is definitely not a form of stored energy in the cell, but it's an energy currency that's used as soon as it is made. So sketch this ATP cycle in your notes. There are two major ways that humans can form ATP in their cells. Um, so we all need that outside energy source to make these catabolic pathways happen. How do we get that energy? We get that energy by ingesting the nutrients that we need and the nutrients are, are in the carbon to carbon bonds of the food that we eat, the proteins and the carbohydrates and the lipids that we eat. And glucose is the primary source of energy for our body. This carbohydrate energy of glucose is then converted to cellular energy in the form of ATP through two processes, aerobic cellular respiration. This requires oxygen and produces carbon dioxide and anaerobic fermentation, which does not require oxygen. For both of these to begin, the molecule that's needed for these pathways is glucose. But if glucose is not available, energy can still be formed. So there's pathways that allow um, 
the stored carbohydrate called glycogen stored in your muscle cells. It's many, many glucose, thousands of glucose bonded together. That can be broken apart and glucose can be retrieved from stored carbohydrate. Also, stored fat is a source for cellular respiration in the form of triglycerides. And then other organic molecules can be used in the cellular respiration reaction. And a great example of that would be proteins can be broken down into amino acids, and then the amino acids can be used as a source of fuel for cellular respiration. The purpose of cell respiration, one molecule of glucose is broken down, and up to 36 ATP molecules are generated for every one molecule of glucose. That number 36 is variable, it depends on the organism. What's required by the cell for cell respiration to happen? First of all, um, in humans, you need a mitochondria in your cells, which we have. You need to have a supply of the molecules glucose and oxygen, and you need vitamins. Why do we need the vitamins? Niacin and riboflavin. We need these to make energy carriers, NADH and FADH2, which are very important to carry energy through the pathway of cell respiration. The end result, you're going to get up to 36 ATP made and a waste product, which is carbon dioxide. We already talked about carbon dioxide being acidic and toxic for the cell and for the organism. If respiration stops, what can happen? No ATP energy would be generated in the cell and cells would start to die. But why would cell respiration stop and not be able to run? Well, if you're missing any of the reactants, so take a look at the chemical equation here. If you're missing um, enough sugars or the proteins or the fats that can feed into this reaction, if you're missing oxygen, that's a critical component for aerobic cellular respiration. So if you're missing oxygen, this can't happen. So those are two reasons that um, cell respiration could not occur. An example would be a heart attack. A person having a heart attack, there is not enough oxygen getting to the cardiac muscle cells. So what's going to happen? Well, we're going to talk in just a minute about sort of an alternative form of cell respiration, fermentation, but eventually the cells will start to die because they're not going to be able to make enough ATP to survive. So we talked about cell respiration taking place in the mitochondria, so we need to talk a little bit more about mitochondria today, and then that'll get us into mitochondrial diseases. So um, we all have mitochondria in our cells because we have eukaryotic cells. We are eukaryotes. And in the cell, we have DNA in two places. We have DNA in the cell nucleus, and that would be our 23 pairs of chromosomes. But there's also DNA that exists in the mitochondria. Mitochondrial DNA is very interesting in that it is passed from mother to child. So mitochondrial DNA is found in the egg or the ova of the female, but it is not found in the sperm. Mitochondrial DNA doesn't undergo the same recombination of DNA as the other 23 chromosomes do. So it stays, the, the order of the bases in the mitochondrial DNA will stay the same from generation to generation. So your mitochondrial DNA is exactly the same as your mother's and her mother's and so on. This gives a record of the maternal line all the way back to the origin of humans. Genealogists can use a test called a mitochondrial DNA test, and this type of test can trace a person's maternal ancestry. And that's because, like I said, every person gets his or her mitochondrial DNA from their mothers. Fathers cannot pass along mitochondrial DNA. If there is a perfect match between a person's mitochondrial DNA and another person's mitochondrial DNA, that indicates that the two people have a common ancestor, and that ancestor would be female. Does human DNA change through the generations? Absolutely. So um, when we have meiosis taking place, the recombination of gamete DNA from the egg and the sperm, there's, there's a mix-up or um, there's a lot of genetic variation that occurs every time this happens, every time gametes are produced to produce a new, new human. So human DNA, even though we have the A's and the, the 
C's and the T's and the G's, it's still, it's going, there's going to be a mix up or genetic variation happening from one generation to the next. But this does not happen with mitochondrial DNA. Some symptoms for mitochondrial diseases, there's a huge um, variety of symptoms that can occur, and some of them are listed on the slide. There's uh, the nervous system can be affected, the heart, the liver, kidneys, the eyes, skeletal muscle, digestive tract, and pancreas. And um, a person that has a mitochondrial disease could have one of these symptoms, or they could have multiple symptoms. So it's very variable. All right, so what if oxygen was not around? How could a cell survive and still make ATP if oxygen was not present? That's called fermentation. A, a big overview of fermentation. It's the breakdown of glucose when oxygen is not present. It takes place entirely in the cytoplasm. It's not efficient. Only two ATP are produced from fermentation compared with the 36 that you get from aerobic cellular respiration. In humans, we have a form of fermentation called lactic acid fermentation that can take place in our muscle cells during strenuous exercise if our oxygen supply is running low. So as you know, you've, everyone has experienced this, I think, um, it causes some problems. You end up with muscle pain because of an accumulation of lactic acid that's happening from lactic acid fermentation. Eventually, though, the soreness would disappear as lactic acid is converted back to pyruvate in the liver. All right, so the purpose of fermentation is to form ATP. When fermentation, when is fermentation normally used by the cells to make ATP? Well, if the body needs a lot of energy in a hurry, this lactic acid fermentation can kick in. Also, if oxygen is not present at all, lactic acid fermentation would occur. So two examples, um, you're in a race, you're sprinting, your muscle cells run out of energy, lactic acid fermentation will kick in short term. That will give you just enough ATP to help your muscle cells continue to function so you can keep in that race until your respiratory system can keep up and get enough oxygen down to your cells. Also, um, like I said before, if a person is having a heart attack, oxygen would not be present at all in those muscle cells. So for the short term, lactic acid fermentation would kick in in the, in the muscle cells. Um, some, a lot of the pain that is felt with a heart attack comes from this lactic acid buildup from that. Two medical conditions that could cause fermentation to happen would be a disease called sickle cell anemia, which occurs in the red blood cells. The red blood cells are shaped in a different way. Um, this is because of a genetic mutation, and they look like a sickle or um, a, a moon shape. And then because of that, they can't carry enough oxygen. Respiratory diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease can also put a person into a low oxygen environment when lactic acid fermentation might need to be turned on. Fermentation always starts with glucose. It takes place in the cytoplasm. The toxic waste product formed at the end is lactic acid. This can adversely affect humans because there will be muscle pain in the area that the lactic acid is building up, cramps, and muscular fatigue. Only two ATP are formed from fermentation. Um, so this is kind of a repeat question here. Muscle aches burning, rapid breathing is a sign of uh, lactic acid fermentation, nausea, and stomach pain. If this goes on too long, a person can end up in lactic acidosis. Remember that was one example of acidosis that we talked about last chapter. Um, and that would be the reason for the rapid breathing because the respiratory system is going to kick in to try and, and buffer the excess hydrogen ions in the bloodstream and try and get rid of that extra carbon dioxide. The equation for fermentation, one glucose molecule produces two lactic acid in the end and only two ATP are made. Which type of catabolic reaction will provide ATP for endurance exercise? So for long-term exercise, a human has to have aerobic respiration going on to make enough ATP for to run a marathon or to do long-term exercise. 
But for very fast and quick bursts of activities, lactic acid fermentation producing those two ATP will be enough. How can you increase the number of mitochondria in your cells? Well, you can do more exercise. Studies have shown that um, people that routinely exercise and train do have more mitochondria in their cells. So there's always a variable number of mitochondria from hundreds to thousands in each cell. And um, the cells do have the ability to make more of those. Thank you.